what we're going to be doing is a GM shop manual procedure for what's called a pressure brake bleed. And we're also going to show using the Tech 2 on both a diesel uh, engine control unit as well as a gasoline engine control unit for how we would then cycle the, um, the valves in the uh, ABS system down here and get air out of that. So you do that if you had replaced this or if you had had a situation where you ran this dry and you were concerned that you might have gotten air in here because it got activated somehow. You normally, if you didn't get this activated, air is not going to get in here with just that kind of situation. But if for some reason ABS tried to engage, you'd suck all that air in there when you had that air in the line. So this is just a full full procedure to blow everything out. And what I'm, I'm not going to use the actual um, uh, Kent Moore type tools that the GM dealer would have for this, but I'm going to use um, product from Motive that's uh, much easier to get for us regular folks, a lot cheaper too. Uh, basically, you take the top off the reservoir. It's going to be different for each GM vehicle. And there's these various adapters that uh, Motive makes. And inside, you know, it's a piece of uh, machined aluminum or sometimes steel. And then there's a, a, a rubber side that becomes the gasket under, under pressure. And that takes the place of the reservoir cap. And they give you a mechanism for securing this. You know, sometimes I've, I've read that people don't have it work out. I've used this a couple of times. I haven't had any problem with it. And it's a system of J-hooks and chains. And, and basically what you're going to have are these chains and J-hooks that go into these notches on the side of this guy. And then you pull them up underneath and secure them on the other side by going up underneath the, the, um, the, the valve housing here of the master cylinder. And that's going to compress this on and, and make a seal. And before you actually do anything with it, you'll end up you know, doing a pressure test, and I'll show that here too in a minute. Now the particular case of this, this GM truck, this is a 98, the third eye of the chain here, or the third link of the chain rather, looks like the sweet spot for having the right amount of slack. Pull this one over here in as well. Same deal. And this we're just going to tighten it up. We're not going to go crazy with it because we don't want to break anything. But we just want to get a good tight seal with that rubber gasket that's on the underside of this machined cover. Okay, so we're just going to go all the way around like this. Try to evenly tighten it up until it starts to feel snug. And then after we get this done, what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect the, the pump piece over here that you see on this side. And we're going to pressurize it up to about 10 PSI on the gauge. And we're going to let it sit for a few minutes to make sure that what we're doing right here looks good and it's holding pressure. All right. So this, this guy's feeling pretty tight. These guys are all feeling pretty tight. I'm not going to go too much further. This one I'm done with. This one's good. This one maybe a little more. Maybe a little more here as well. All right. All right. So now I'm going to come over here and give this guy a connection. And what I'm going to have here is a 14. A millimeter on the side that's connected to the adapter and I think it's a 17 on the side that's connected to the pressure tank. You can connect this beforehand if you want. I just find it's a little bit easier to get this guy on to do it like this. Apologize for some of the background noise today. One of the neighbors is working on his motorcycle and here I'm revving the engine over there you guys can hear that or not. All right, so get these kinks out of the line. All right, basically the deal is after that, it's just we're going to pressurize this guy up. Make sure he's on nice and tight. It's just like, uh, kind of like the stuff you'd use in your yard to spray the, the weed killer or something like that. I mean, it's no big deal takes a while to build up the pressure. And like I said, I'm just going to take it up to 10 
for this test. Right, five. Almost to ten. All right, so you stop for a second. A little bit more tightness, make sure I'm good. And you got to make sure you go through this procedure, unfortunately, because if you don't get a good seal, you're going to have brake fluid spray all over the place when you do the next phase of this, which is to actually put brake fluid into this container. All right, I think that tightened up that little leak. Like I said, we're just going to let this sit at uh, 10 PSI pressure, and we're going to let it sit for maybe 10 minutes. And I'm going to come back and check it and see if it's leaking. So we'll come back in a few minutes. Guys, this is um, just to show you what I was talking about the service manual while we wait for that dry test. This is my 98 uh, GM truck service manual. And so this is the section I was talking about, about under hydraulic brakes and pressure bleeding. There's a different kind of assembly that GM would use and a lot more expensive too. That uh, you know has a similar kind of latching system but kind of goes right down into the, the, the uh, bottom of the reservoir itself. Whereas the motive system covers it up and pressurizes it that way. So they talk about how to go through this. Uh, you know, if you don't have this actual set of tools, the pressures and things they talk about here aren't going to apply. And then in the back of the manual, or in the back section under the anti lock brake system, they talk about this ABS uh, bleeding procedure. And for this particular truck, it, it's something that runs with the brake pedal pressed, and it doesn't actually walk you around the vehicle for this year. It just talks about the fact that you need to um, run this and then typically what you would do is then run this other procedure. Uh, for example, they talk about down here, if you happen to have replaced that modulator valve for the brake system, then you'd run that ABS bleed procedure first and then you'd run this. And that's similar to what we're going to do. We're going to try and cover both bases. But just to give you a comparison, you know, I got here uh, just to show for comparison, right? So here's um, uh, an 04 J car uh, service manual. It talks about the same pressure bleeding procedure and very very similar setup but then when they talk about uh, the automated bleed part of the procedure this particular newer vehicle and again this is going to vary depending on the year you're doing this procedure to this guy um, the tech 2 is going to tell you to walk around and open the bleeder valves one at a time and it's actually going to blow through the bleed for you so you're going to get the whole enchilada run by the tech tool we're going to do it the manual way, just pointing out that in some cases, this automated bleed procedure is a little bit more automated depending on how new the vehicle is. The older it is, even though it's still called the automated bleed procedure, it's not quite as automated as you would think. And you're going to have to do that part yourself, like I'll show in this video. All right, let's go back and uh, check and see how that's going on that pressure. All right, guys, uh, I've let this sit for about uh, 20, 25 minutes. It's gone down just a hair. It's not enough that I'm going to worry about. Um, I actually did just uh, right after we paused the video, I, I went ahead and retightened this guy over here because I realized I forgot to put some Teflon tape on it. Uh, sometimes that can be a source of leaks. And I repressurized it up, waited that 20 to 25 minutes, and I got this. That's good enough for what I'm going to do. So I'm going to let the pressure out of this guy now. And all you have to do on that is just slowly release the top. All right, once the pressure goes down, then we're going to go ahead and add some brake fluid in here, and I'm just going to use some Wally Mart DOT3 because it's all the same in the end. And I'm going to go ahead and just pour the entire container into the motive reservoir here. I'm actually going to blow all this through. So once we get this added in here, we're going to repressurize it. And this time, instead of 10, we're going to pressurize it to 15. And again, like I was mentioning in the service manual shot earlier, if you're not using the genuine GM tools, these pressures are different, right? So this vendor here, Motive, they recommend those pressures, and I'm going with what they recommend in this case. So we're following the steps of the service manual. But since we're not using the exact same tool, we're going to use a different set of pressures. Pressurize the sky up. At this point now, what you see is we'll have brake fluid working its way over into the reservoir. And there'll be some bubbles as this goes. That's okay because that air will end up 
working its way to the top of the seal and the fluid will end up filling the bottom of the reservoir, which is what we want. Okay, we're sitting at 5 psi. As we get closer to the pressure we want, we're at 9. Let's see over here, we're sitting just right about at 9. We've got a little bit of an air bubble here that should work its way out as we get past 10. Sitting at 12. And uh, you know, my, my take is from what I've uh, seen on, on the documentation and what I've read, you never want to go above 15 with this particular product. And that's what I've got right here. So you can see I set this guy at 15. I've left him pressurized. You can see there's a little bit of a gap right here in the tube here. That's fine. That's kind of always going to work its way around. We've got solid fluid all the way up through here. We're going to have a little bit of air that will probably work its way back from the, the reservoir over there. That's fine because we know we have a good seal there. We have a good seal there. And as long as I tighten this down good, we have a good seal there. I'm just going to try and watch this. I can see I have this hair off from 15. I'm going to give maybe another one more pop. All right, so now, toss this guy in the recycle bin. We're going to go into the cab and we're going to run the Tech 2 bleed procedure. And like I said before in the service manual, depending on your vehicle, uh, it may give you a different pattern of things to do. It may tell you to walk around if you have a newer vehicle and actually bleed the brakes. I'm not expecting that on this. Um, I'm going to do a 98 and a 99 today. I'm going to start with this 99 diesel because I want you to see the difference in the Tech 2 screens. So the Tech 2 has got a little bit of a different screen depending on whether it's gasoline or diesel. And then I'm going to walk through and um, manually bleed out the brakes with this pressure method. And then we'll come back and, and, and button it all up. So let me go ahead and move into the cab with the Tech, Tech 2. plugged into the diagnostic link connector and we're powering it up. And by the way, this is my Tech 2 clone. So you don't necessarily have to have the, the real thing to do this particular procedure. It can be an inexpensive uh, copy like this. All right, so we're going to go into Diagnostics, and we're going to select, like I said, I'm going to start with this diesel. So this one's a 99. Last year of the 6.5 diesel, I'm going to come down to Chassis, and it's a four-wheel drive K-series. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the four-wheel all three sensor selection. I'm going to come down to special functions and I'm going to go down and do the automatic or excuse me automated bleed procedure. So it's going to pull the software up for that. Whoops. Give it some power. Ignition on. Let's go back. Do that again. Okay we'll come in now. All right. So we've got everything set up service manual wise. We've got the vehicle off the ground and all four uh, wheels off of it so we can access the, the bleed valves very easily. So we've got parking brake set. We already did this stuff with the fluid. We've got the motive already. Transmission is in park. I'm gonna push the brake pedal down here. And as you can hear it, It's basically doing its thing. Feels just like um, when you got four wheel, four wheel anti lock brakes engaged. All right, no problems. Brake test is complete. And uh, basically, I like to run this before we do the regular bleed. And like I was telling you, some vehicles are going to tell you to walk around on this test. And, and do the bleed on each wheel one at a time. On this particular year and, and type, that's all it's going to do. All right, so um, we're, gonna, we're done with this, and we're gonna exit back out, and we're, at this point, you know, we can shut the Tech 2 off because we're done with this particular part of the test, and now we're gonna go run the actual bleed, so we're gonna go back outside the vehicle now. All right, guys, so I'm just giving you a shot here what I'm doing. I've got, I've got the bleeder valve on the rear driver. It was the second one I did. You start with the rear passenger. And you can see I've just got the clear plastic pipe there. I've got it cracked open. And what I've done is I just, you know, nothing really fancy here. I'm just letting this stuff run into uh, an, an empty cheer wine bottle here. And I just let it run for about a half inch or so to make sure that I don't see any bubbles.
coming through the line. You know, initially I saw a couple, and that's what I'm going to keep doing on the on each one. So I've, you start with the passenger rear, then you go over and do the driver rear, and then we're going to go move to the front. So I'll pick it up over there. This one, I'm on the uh, passenger side. Uh, excuse me, the driver's side front, and I'm going to come in here with my 10 millimeter on this particular vehicle. I'm going to get my hose. I'm just going to loosen this guy up. You can see immediately, I don't know if you guys can see in the video, right, but there's a bunch of little crud and stuff moving through here. You can kind of see it traversing through, and that's mostly what we're trying to squeeze out. I don't expect to see any air necessarily, but I want to blow as much of that out of the caliper reservoir and out of the hose and stuff all the way heading up into the master cylinder. So like I said, so I just let this go for a little while, but you know, about a I don't know, like you can see down here in my little bottle. I didn't empty it from the other sides, but you know, I run about you know, maybe that much in the bottle for each wheel. Unless I see air bubbles. If I see air bubbles, I run it for longer. And if I'm trying to do a flush, of course, uh, I, I run probably a, a, a good whole bottle through each wheel. But um, this is the best procedure I've found. You know, you run the Tech 2, you exercise the uh, braking module, you pressurize the system, and you know, you can do this pretty much by yourself once you get set up. The actual hardest part is getting a good seal with the, uh, the Motive product and so you don't have any leaks. All right, that is it. Tighten that guy up. Put a paper towel here so we don't have a mess. Kind of crack our seal, let all that run away into our bottle. Take this off. And again, just you know, make sure it is tight and then always make sure to replace the dust cap. So we are done. We've done all four wheels. We've exercised the uh, electronic braking module and um, we're, ready, we're ready to basically put the wheels back on. Let me step back from this and show you guys the vehicle here. Like I was saying, in order to do this procedure, um, I've got all of the wheels off of the truck so that I can easily access both the front and the rear uh, Master, excuse me, uh, wheel cylinders, mass, uh, calipers in the front, and of course rear wheel cylinders, a particular vehicle has got drum brakes in the back. And then when we come up to the front here under the hood, as we've been using this, our pressure is naturally going to go down. And we pretty much I'll drop about uh, 5 PSI uh, from my, well, my experience per wheel. So you do have to come periodically around here and type, uh, pump it back up a few. I try never to go back to 15. I kind of try to keep it around 12. And you want to keep an eye on not running out of fluid in here. Otherwise, you're going to end up ruining the whole thing and doing it all over again because you pushed air into, this, into the system. I hope this helps you out. I'm not quite done yet because I'm going to give you a, a view of what the Tech 2 screen only will look like on a gasoline vehicle just for comparison to this diesel. But the whole, the whole piece of walking around and uh, letting it bleed out under pressure is going to be the same regardless of the vehicle. So we'll come back to that in a minute. Guys, um, in a gasoline truck, just to kind of show you the procedure there, it's going to come up. It's pretty much the same as what you saw before. We're going to go into diagnostics. We're going to pick the model year. In this case, it's one older. Still a truck. We're going to go into chassis. We're going to confirm this particular one is a K. Four wheel drive. Go in here. Again, we're going to go to the four wall three sensor. And we're going to come down to special functions. And we're going to come down to that automated, automated bleed feature. And we're going to come in here. We're going to get it all set up. We've got our parking brake set. We've got our transmission in park. We're going to press the brake pedal. Deal. It's all going to be computer controlled by the ECU. Basically, cycles the four wheel drive system just like if you applied it on a wet road. Okay, no codes. It did the bleed. That part's done. So, that just gives you a kind of a comparison that it's really the same regardless of which engine you have. If you go back really old, um, older years, the diesel will have a little bit of a different look to it on the Tech 2. 
but uh, anything from like uh, I'd, I'd probably say 97 on is going to look the same. Guys, we're done, but I want to come back to the service manual here and kind of wrap this up. Just want to reinforce this kind of guidance about starting with the right rear, that's the passenger side uh, wheel cylinder, and then working your way over to the driver's side rear, then going up to the passenger side front, and then the left front uh, as you do this uh, procedure in terms of the order you do the bleeding. And I also wanted to come back here and take a look at this page here. This is the actual um, page that had to do with the uh, automate, automated bleed procedure. And right over here, this is what kind of threw me off when I was looking at this. Can I zoom this in for you guys? Um, it was giving me an indication that the procedure with gas was going to be different than the procedure with diesel. And that's why I was expecting to show you guys something different. But what I've figured out since is that's only true if it's a, uh, you know, a particular older model year than the, the 98 and the 99 I was working with here. So anyway, I hope this procedure helps you guys out. I hope you found it useful. If you find you have some questions, you want to leave a comment, I'll try to help out. If you found the video helpful, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.